Make us a shining light to this dark world of sin, that the whole world might see the glory of thy name. May we bring a word of hope to the nations, thy word of life to the people. Knowledge that leads to eternal life. First Bible lesson, Romans 1, 11 to 16. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but I was led hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Second Bible Lesson 1 Corinthians 4, 1-6 let a man so account of us, as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself. Yet I am not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore, Judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in figure transferred to myself and to Apollos to your stakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against the other. Golden Text, John 14.6 Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Brethren, of all the things written about God, the only true witness is our Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, He is the only way, the life, and the truth. Therefore, Irrespective of where you come from, your status and position, it is expected of you to abide by His injunctions. Brethren, we have every right to praise God because He is the only one who has led us to the accurate wisdom of the truth. This confirms what He has already said. I will come again and lead you to the accurate wisdom of the truth. Brethren, for this reason I have come not only for the people of Nigeria, Africa, Europe, man, neither spirit nor fire. Rather, I have come for the sake of all the inhabitants of this world, for the life of those yet to be born, as well as the life of those in existence. Also, I have come to show mankind how to live a good life in the Father, so that we may be glorified. Brethren, None of the teachings imparted in the universities, colleges, secret societies, and other places can lead you unto the accurate wisdom of truth, aside from the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thus, the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ constitute eternal life. Therefore, do not deceive yourself any more that you are a member of a particular church denomination, that you belong to this association, society, or lodge for none of these things can give life. As I had told you earlier, this era is the last dispensation. Very soon we are going to commence the real life, the reason being that the commencement of an event does not tell the end of such event. A lot of people have carried out several researches on different occasions on how people would live eternal and moral life, most desired of God. But unfortunately, None of these researches have produced any useful result. This lack of result and knowledge on how to live a morally rewarding life on earth now constitute the canker worm plaguing the entire world. 
but out of luck. In this dispensation, the answer on how to live a morally rewarding life has come. Brethren, we had desired peace, truth, love, eternal life, but all those virtues are right before us. All the things we desire, such as good health, beauty, wealth, position, recognition, children, favors, etc., have been brought to us, and those things are centered around the Father's teachings. Brethren, I have carried out a thorough research into these things, and I am using this opportunity to streamline them into their proper positions and shape. And even if in the process of streaming things in their proper places, it takes me a hundred million years, I will not get tired or feel any pains. The reason being that the entire world has perished. People perished in the sea. People disappeared on land. Many others were faced with problems and afflictions. But since God is love, peace, truth, He sent His Son Jesus Christ to come and give us peace, as well as lead us aright. However, when Christ came, we looked down on Him as a very minor person of lowly birth. We also regarded Christ as a person who should not be reckoned with. But little did we know that Christ has nothing to do with mundane things, because He is God, created in the image and likeness of man. Hence, He is the one who has brought love, goodness unto the last dispensation, so that we may not perish again. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ united the entire people of the world to become one flock under one shepherd. Brethren, if in the past you had taken the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ lightly, from this moment gird your loins and give more thought and time to His teachings. Also, you are enjoined to regard the teachings of God as life, peace, treasure, and also put on these virtues as armor. Brethren, I want you to know that Christ did not come to salvage any particular tribe on earth. Rather, He brought salvation unto Himself. Also, He brought peace, wisdom of truth unto the entire human race, so that we all will be in peace as one flock under one shepherd. The type of joy I am having cannot be compared to anything on earth. Even if all the liquor in the entire world is taken, it will not be as intoxicating as the joy which is so profound in me. The reason for such profound joy is simply because of what is happening in this kingdom. This kingdom has been revealed and made known to the entire people of the world. As such, the blind, deaf, dumb, and lame have seen this kingdom. Also, the eternal life which we had sought for has been brought unto us. On this note, you should know that eternal life cannot be obtained from man. It is only our Lord Jesus Christ who can grant eternal life and only to those that have hearkened to and practiced His teachings faithfully. Brethren, I am happy that you are all my witnesses in this world. The work of God is not meant for Africans nor one man alone. It is meant for the entire inhabitants of the world. Hence, all hands should be on deck. A lot of people claim that the Holy Spirit ended on the day of Pentecost. That is an illusion. It is also an erroneous belief and total falsehood. This is to let you know and correct that illusion. For, in actual fact, the Holy Spirit had been in existence right from the inception of the world. The Holy Spirit is the one that accomplishes every work here. He is an embodiment of the wisdom of truth, power, the word, our looks, the light, riches. More so, he is an embodiment of all the scientific and technological knowledge that man uses to invent or manufacture things so that man may live a better life. Brethren, let the first lesson be re-examined. First Bible Lesson, Romans 1, 11-16 For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. 
Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Children of God, have you heard that? If you are one of those who had a different thinking or perception, erase such thoughts from your hearts. This is because brotherhood has reached all the institutions of learning, government establishments, societies, etc. in the world. In fact, there is nowhere on earth that brotherhood has not reached, especially because of our publications and tracts. From now on, our publications shall focus on issues such as patience, humility, truthfulness, mercy, righteousness, love, long-suffering, meekness, togetherness, and all virtues. When all these shall have been treated, then would the actual practice of teachings commence. A lot of you do claim to be preachers, whereas you have not yet started. If you profess to be a preacher, you are expected to preach the Word of God as well as practice the Word of God. Also, you are expected to teach the Word, abide by it, and dwell in it, because the Word of God constitutes our lives, patience, humility, power, and everything around us. Therefore, by coming in here every day to receive the Word and also teach others, you will be enlightened. Brethren, whosoever does not receive the teachings of God cannot know God, and such a person cannot enter the kingdom of God. A lot of people think that the kingdom of God is above the sky, in the sun, beneath the earth. That is not correct. Rather, the kingdom of God is an embodiment of the wisdom of truth and the wisdom of God. Hence, if you know all these things, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free according to the Scriptures. Brethren, whatever is happening in the world, such as politics, commercial activities, various denominational activities are good, but none of them can lead you into salvation. The only medium whereby one could get to the accurate wisdom of the truth is to practice the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, in the past it was believed that before you are ordained, your legs, hands must be washed, and you would be girdled with black, yellow, blue, or red turban. All those things do not matter in this kingdom. The only thing that supersedes everything is the truth. As soon as you start preaching the Word of God, live a moral life that is based on the teachings of Christ, you are free. Brethren, you have all heard that civilization started in Egypt and the first university in the world was founded in Egypt. The whites in the past went there to study. Hence, all the knowledge about science and technology started from Egypt. But what is the situation with the Egyptians now? They are nowhere to be found because they are not seen, heard, or recognized. The reason being that they held on to that which they never believed in. The time is short, so you are expected to be serious with your activities, so that you may not regret in the end that you had gone to school in overseas countries, and you earn chains of degrees, yet you are not saved. Know that your academic attainment is not a yardstick for your salvation. Brethren, whatsoever may be your attainment, achievement, endeavors, heights, none of these can be equated with your salvation. But if you will be serious with the teachings which are imparted to you, practice same without adulteration. You shall witness peace unto your soul. What I am telling you is the mission I came to accomplish on earth. I did not come with any church, prayer house, school, wife, husband, or anything for that matter. I brought this truth which constitute the way to salvation. This truth is the only channel by which the world can have salvation. 
all those who shall abide by this truth shall be saved. One thing that gladdens my heart is that we have changed from our past life to a new one. For instance, a lot of people do compare certain facts about the Word of God to when we were at Eton, saying that the Word of God at Eton was okay and interesting. But I want to let you know that whoever tries to compare today's Word with that of Eton and concludes that Eton was better is a liar. It is because at Eton we engaged in drinking of wine, snuffing, fornication, wearing of shoes, and committing other vices that made you say that brotherhood at Eton was very hot and interesting? Also, it is because at Eton nobody was asked to give a mite, but you ate satisfactorily, and that made you to conclude that brotherhood was very hot and interesting. That is not the truth at all. Rather, this is the time that brotherhood has come into reckoning which is why a lot of documentations are being done so nobody could be deceived. The system of leading with deceitfulness does not exist anymore because we have finally reached the promised land and we have seen it, the promised land, that is the new kingdom of God. Brethren, I want to let you know that Christ is the truth and His words are true. As a result of this, we are all enjoined to receive His teachings Practice same without adulteration, for by so doing you shall have eternal life. I am a witness of the word of Christ, and he is equally my witness, therefore whatever I tell you is the truth. I had told you that nobody knows me, nor can testify to having known Alumba Alumba Abu, unless I reveal myself to you. I am an embodiment of all the things you have seen today in the world. I do not segregate. I do not know or associate with people because of their color, language, tribe. This is because the things which you see in this world constitute the kingdom of God. Brethren, a lot of people have carried out researches about my personality. All the societies in the world have tried to investigate me, but they have never discovered me anywhere. My name does not belong to any of the societies above the sky, beneath the earth, in the abyss, in the city of God. Hence, the teachings that I impart are not from me, but nor from man, but they are from God. Brethren, there was a certain meeting held in Cameroon for all the Christian denominations. Surprisingly, amongst them was a member of the Rosicrucian order, Amorc. So the chairman declared that he did not want a member of any society in the meeting, but only the true and pure Christians. The Rosicrucian order member stood up and said that he could see his fellow brethren who belonged to the same society in the meeting. Hence, he decided to attend. The Amorc member said a lot of those claiming to be Christians there were members of his society, and if permitted, he would love to mention their names, starting from their leader. Everybody in the hall kept quiet. The brother further said that in the entire world all the members of the various church denominations were members of one secret society or the other except BCS alone, which symbolized the truth and the only place where truth dwells. This revelation brought confusion and the meeting could not continue. Therefore, that's why I do tell you that once you depart from these teaching, you are lost completely. For instance, we have a barrister at law by name William. This brother studied law overseas and practiced there as well. But now brother William uses the teachings of the father in his law profession when it comes to the practical aspect. A lot of you do not truly practice the teachings of the father. Rather, you are mixing issues. But this should be made known to you that whatsoever you are asked not to do, once you do it, you have broken the law of God. For instance, if you are given wine and you are enjoined not to drink of it, but after a while you sip a little quantity of the wine, you have broken the law, and whatsoever shall be the outcome of that shall affect you directly. You could recall that God instructed Adam and Eve to eat of all the fruits in the garden, except the fruit in the center of the garden. Ever since Adam and Eve tasted of that forbidden fruit in the center of the garden, did they see any prosperity in their affairs? Since then, 
has the world known any peace? Or is there any improvement in the condition of things? That is the thing. Once you depart from these teachings, you find yourself elsewhere. That Brother Williams has practiced law for 36 years using the teachings of the Father. At times, when questions are not asked properly or in accordance with the Father's teachings, he would object and even direct you on how to ask questions. The brother does not have anything to do with his professional jargons aside from the teachings of the Father. But in your case, you still hold fast to your secret societies, practices, and irresponsible lifestyles. All those things are deceitfulness and there is no truth in them. As far as this kingdom is concerned, there is no woman, man, rich, poor, or land here. Hence, if someone should come and declare that he is in his father's land, I would inquire to know the name of his father, because God is the father of all. Why do some people claim to be in their father's land? Very soon, I will commence judgment, and all these nonsense you are doing would stop. Most of you claim to be lawyers, and I always ask, who made you lawyers? Where are you from? Also, most of you claim that you are a reverend, and I do question, who made you a reverend? I am looking at the entire people of the world as filthy rags. That is why people are afraid of me. Even though the worldly people are afraid of me, I do not have any problem with any of them. Rather, I want everybody to abide by the truth and live their lives so that we may receive the blessings which we had waited so patiently to receive. Brethren, my first witness is drawn from John 16, 13-15. How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Brethren, let the second lesson be re-examined. Second Bible Lesson, 1 Corinthians 4, 1-6 Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with it is a very small thing that I should judge of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Is there any place for anyone to hide? Brethren, if a BCS member should go to the police station to report a case, while there he would be interrogated, and if he should say that he is a Brotherhood member, he would be asked to go home, because Brotherhood members do not take people to the police. Also, if a BCS member should take somebody to court, while in court, he would be asked to mention the church he belongs to, and once he says BCS, he would be asked if he had informed his leader, because they know that Brotherhood members do not take people to court. The same thing is applicable to the hospitals, everywhere and every society. As such, if as a BCS member you go to any place with your shoes on, people would know that you are not a true Brotherhood the reason being that you are well known by everybody in the world. Also, if someone should use the name of BCS to commit fornication, he would be made to understand that brotherhood does not indulge in fornication. Brethren, where else do you want to run to now? Is there any place for one to hide? For instance, if a thief should break into your house and steal your property, and you later apprehend and take the thief to court, you would be asked the church you belong to, and once you mention BCS, you would be enlightened that BCS does not take people to court. You would rather be advised to show love to the thief. At that point, you will be so confused. The theme of the gospel which the people of the world are preaching now centers particularly on BCS. That is why you are blamed most of the times, and you are also wrongly accused. 
But since I do not bother myself about all those things, calumny and blasphemy, I am free because I know very well that any utterance made by someone would surely follow after that person. This should go around to all the human race. Whosoever practices the word of God is as free as air, and he has no problems. Brethren, let the golden text be re-examined. Golden Text John 14.6 Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Brethren, my second witness is drawn from John 1, 1 to 17. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was the life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness to that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I have finished. What you have just heard is what I have for you. A lot of people are of the view that the headquarters of BCS is in Biakpan. Are such people the ones who took the headquarters from 34 Ambo to Biakpan? Where is BCS headquarters to start with? I had thought we are the embodiment of BCS headquarters. Are we not, one by one, the headquarters? For instance, if you should board a ship and you begin to sing songs, do the work of God, are you at fault? Also, if you should erect a big cathedral at Lagos for the Father, are you at fault? Also, if you should sojourn in London and you practice the word of God, strengthen things, would people question why you have come? That is the thing. In essence, we, individually, are the embodiment of brotherhood of the cross and star headquarters. There is no point claiming you are Abu's first son, his second. You are his brother. You come from his village. You are his friend. You all started together. All those things are a waste of time and not the issue at all. We are all one and the embodiment of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity God. Hence, there is no segregation in Him. The entire people of the world constitute Brotherhood of the Cross and Star Headquarters. Therefore, God has not given anybody the warrant or certificate to tell lies steal, nor to stop practicing the word of God. Also, why did you come? Don't you know that this is the city of God? God owns all the cities in the world and everything in the world. Therefore, there is no questioning here. There is no proclamation thus, I do not want to join anything. What do you want to join in earnest? Brethren, that is exactly what I have for you, and I do not want to be tedious with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that whoever believes in Him shall do greater works because He was going back to His Father. Therefore, whosoever believes in Me, the same work shall he do, and much greater work than this shall he do. That is the reason why Christ said, 
whosoever believes in him, greater works than that would they do, because I go back to my Father. Therefore, whosoever believes in me, the same work shall he do, and much greater work than this shall he do. Brethren, if you come across someone who accomplishes his work, know that such is a believer. He has believed fervently in God of a truth. Also, if you come across someone who does not do his work, know that such is a great rebel. Brethren, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Holy Father. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star by leader and teacher Alumba Alumba Abu, compiled by George Morales. May we bring a word of hope to the nations, thy word of life to the people of the earth. May God